MSB here, and today it's time for a budget PvE deck breakdown based on a request from Naki Bermoy, who asked for a cheap human bravery deck. Absolutely! Here you go! This is a human-themed Ruby Sapphire deck which focuses on getting an early health lead and then finishing an opponent with unblockable damage. I call it Relentless Strikes. And here we have the deck. There's four Crushing Blows, four Burn with the Glove Equipment, four Arcane Focus, four Phoenix Guard Messenger, four Wounded War Hero, four Royal Cut Blood with the Trinket Equipment, four Lord Benjamin the Wise, four Cerulean Grand Strategist, and four Lightning Elementals with the Weapon Equipment. For the resource base, there's four Shards of Innovation, ten Sapphire Shards, and ten Ruby Shards, and the champion is Sir Giles Rowan. The total price for the deck is somewhere south of 700 Platinum. You could always sacrifice a little threshold consistency and cut out the Shards of Innovation, and that'll drop the price down to about mm, 500 to 550 Platinum. The general strategy of the deck is to get out Wounded War Heroes early to soften up your opponent, and then drop a Royal Cut Blood after all the removal is gone to finish the match via her unblockable ability. The reason for putting in four of Lord Benjamin, who's unique, is that you really want him out on turn two, and it's likely you'll lose him to an early trade or removal. So having a second one in your hand isn't all that bad, and a third just means a bad mulligan or bad luck. While you'll almost always prefer dropping the War Hero before the Grand Strategist, the Inspire effect from the Strategist can help in the mid to late game to clear way for attackers, help to make good trades, or to control opposing troops and stay alive long enough for the Cutbloods to finish the match. Now that the deck is ready, let's go ahead and take it for a spin. Okay, against the Eldritch Dreamer, I will play first. Let's take a look at this. Uh, you know, n not too bad. I mean, I would have liked a flying unit, but um, I would not throw this hand back. Um, hmm. Would I want to start with a Cerulean Grand Strategist? Or, no, nah, let's do the Wounded War Hero. I don't think I need the um, Inspire effect that much. Normally you prefer Wounded War Hero over Cerulean Grand Strategist, just so you can start getting damage on the board. As so chosen. See, in this situation I'll be happy to... Oh, that's right, he's a zero. He won't trade. Okay, good. Excellent. Burn. That is wonderful. And let's bring out the Grand Strategist. And swing him. So yeah, normally you want to make sure that you have like a Lord Benjamin in hand, but um, if I had Mulligan, that I could have gone horrifically wrong. Uh, if he does a turn to Thunderbird, and then um, it's but and then Hero powers it, I would have burned that. But she didn't. Fine. Um, and then now I'm absolutely going to Royal Cut Blood because I want to start powering that up. Power, power. Yeah, you really need to get a Cut Blood out so you can start doing that unblockable damage. The best part about the Cut Blood is that it's just straight unblockable. It's not, you know, only blockable by, sh you know, troops with the same shard, and it's not, who does he go for? And good, excellent. I thought so because his um, his attack power is higher and he's buffable. So it's kind of a natural assumption that he'll use that. Okay, let's go ahead and put this out. And it doesn't matter, nothing is double threshold in this deck, but for the sake of evenness, Put those down, because they'll start buffing each other. See, he got the opportunity to use the uh, the Grand Strategist anyway, <laughs> so I got to swing in for an extra damage. Okay, and then just cut blood. Now he won't attack in uh, with my troops, and I can use the Wounded War Hero to, um, to uh, exhaust that Buccaneer so I can swing in with impunity. You know, make him trade with something much more important, unless he throws out another Buccaneer. Then fine. Nope, Oracle Song. That's perfectly fine. Please, go ahead and draw cards. Absolutely fine. Ooh, good. Perfect. Okay, so I will um, Phoenix Card Messenger to beef up my uh, Wood War Heroes. Um, 13. Oh, that's lethal. Okay, so I will um, exhaust the Cupblood to exhaust the uh, Buccaneer. Um, assuming he, he... I doubt he'll uh, be blocking with uh, the Ancestor's Chosen, but let's just say he does. He does not. Normally he wouldn't. And then deal the combat damage and burn his face. Um, so that's why that Grand Strategist is just really nice, because you've got a, 
you know the the wounded war heroes and the cut bloods increase in um, in power throughout the game, and then it gives you that opportunity to just kind of shoo guys out of the way and then uh, strike in with the guys that you really want to. Excellent. Very nice. So as you can tell, the Relentless Strikes deck is a human wrecking ball that demolishes your opponents while leaving your wallet intact. As far as alternate cards are concerned, you could swap out the Messengers for Thunderbirds for a damage boost, or you could swap out the Strategists for Crimson Clarities or Ashwood Soloists to dump your hand faster. But the problem is your thresholds might give you problems, and you'd have to swap Lord B for another card draw engine. Besides, Naki's request was for a cheap human deck, not a menagerie. However, if you do have the cards or currency lying around, a great alternate to Lord Benjamin is the Ancestor's Chosen with the Helm Equipment, and swapping the Grand Strategist to Highlands Magi with Boot Equipment. This keeps the human theme going, and getting one or two chosen out early will give you crazy late game swinging power, especially if you hold the one cost Highlands Magus in hand, until you have a few spirits to drop so the random inspire hits them all. Of course, then you'd need to change the deck name to Relentless Spirits instead of Strikes. Before I finish, a little housekeeping. First, unlike my budget deck here, future videos will be more based on total deck price rather than card rarities. Once the PvE campaign is out, you'll be able to buy PvE cards with gold, and even now there are rare and legendary cards that are easy to get with a little bit of arena farming. So this and future budget decks should cost anywhere between 500 to 1000 platinum, with possible PvE farming requirements to get a specific card or equipment. Of course, my normal decks will have no restrictions. As referenced earlier, be sure to check out hexprice.com as that will have all of the card and equipment prices you'll ever need. Second, the way I name decks is now going to have the shard type in brackets. This lets me show off my penchant for cute wordplay and you get to see what shards a deck is comprised of just by the name. Win-win! Lastly, I love fan requests. I love them in the same irrationally deep way that some people love cats. I mean, cats at your wedding? Seriously? Yeah, like that. Requests, comments, subs, and likes on the video are what keep me motivated. So now, after just hitting 900 subscribers, I wanted to say thank you for watching, and thank you to Naki Bermoy for spurring me into action with your request. If you haven't already, please take the time to subscribe. And, as always, I'm MSB, wishing you good games and good times.